This is from uh, What's Canon. up, guys? I will link uh, the video in chat before we even watch it. And then I'll link it again at the end. I should start linking videos at the start as well. And do remember, you can uh, submit reactions. If there's a channel called Reaction Randy on our Discord, there's, uh, I'm going to give drop you guys a link. If anybody wants me to watch something, you can drop stuff there for suggestion. And uh, let's take a look at the um, Ride of Mode details. Today, I'm bringing you an exclusive interview with the upcoming Riot MMORPG director, Greg Street, also known as Ghostcrawler. This is a small segment from a two-hour interview that I had with Greg, so if you want to watch the full interview, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified when it drops. Also, I'm streaming live on Twitch five to six days a week, so visit me there. It's the best way to connect with me personally, and let's begin. Right. I do want to talk to you about monetization, but before I ask that question, what do you think separates games like WoW and Final Fantasy XIV from, from the others that just don't make it? Like, what is it about them? I mean, is it just the budget? Is it the creative design that's behind it? Is it a team that's running it? I mean, it could be multiple things, but yeah. it just... It, it you know there's plenty of good ideas and there's plenty of i'm sure every mmo that comes out it's like hey we feel like we can do this better and i love the fact that when we talked earlier you're you're talking about hey I, I think one of the things that riot does very well is they look at games like dota and like and, and think hey maybe we could do this better by doing this and this and they've just had good they've had solid success with that that i'm sure that's the mindset with a lot of mmo developers but they still just don't make it like i would love to hear your thoughts on that yeah, I think I think you're right that budget is part of it. Like again, right. thinking of rating, it's a spectacle. And in Final right. Fantasy, when a boss comes down and like maybe the guitar kicks in or something, like they're gonna they don't yeah. mind making like custom music for, for boss fights. It's good and shit. Stuff like that. Like it is it is something amazing to see. And you can make a really, really fun encounter that's pretty much just like a big ogre dude hitting you, but it's just not the same epic scale. It's not the sense of like this is something, um, but yeah, budget's part of it. I also think the bigger games and maybe the ones with the bigger budget are just better at serving a broader audience. So mm. say you make an MMO and you're like, hey, this MMO is PVP only because we think we can just make a better game if it's PVP. Well, you, you could probably guess there are going to be players that are like, well, that's, I'm out. That's not me. Final Fantasy has a great like crafting game. It has a great social game. It lets you decorate your houses. So it serves players a lot of really different motivations. I'm surprised at how well informed he is. This is a really, I mean, I haven't been following Ghost. I'm, okay, that might that might have sounded a little bit insulting and even naive for my part. What I mean by that is I'm surprised at the amount of detail that he is providing when he's describing Final Fantasy XIV. And I think that this is a very good indication for the game that he's developing because if you remember some of the games that we've seen in the past, stuff like Anthem, for instance, uh, one of the, key problems with Anthem was that the team that developed Anthem was developing it in a bubble. As a matter of fact, the higher-ups at Bioware were constantly saying, yeah, we don't care about the, that Destiny game. That doesn't matter. I was like, what the fuck do you mean it doesn't matter? That's your fucking competition. You're making a game that's going to be in the same space as this other game. Clearly, you need to be informed. But it's like, it's very good to see that ghost crawler is you know studying final fantasy 14 very closely and seeing what works there and like irian monk just said in chat very much like yoshi p studied world of warcraft which for those of you that are not aware like yoshi p basically played a fuck ton of world of warcraft to, to serve kind of like as a basis as to how he was going to revamp final fantasy 14 1.0 and make it into the amazing game that it is today. So, yeah, it's it's good to see that Ghost Crawler is paying attention to that. I'm assuming he's also paying attention to stuff like Guild Wars 2 and the success that is having. Naturally, we know that he pays attention to World of Warcraft, having been someone that worked closely with that game, so it makes sense. Right. I don't know if you can answer this, but do you feel comfortable with the budget that you have for the Riot MMO? Oh, that's actually a really interesting question. I think I can answer it. Um, one of the nice things about Riot is we're we're not going to run out of money, right? I'm, I'm not going to have a publisher that's like, "Hey, if you you know you got to ship by Christmas or 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 we're canceled." Mm. Um, Riot will 
cancel this game if the game isn't good enough. They're not going to cancel the game because it gets too expensive. And those, you know, those go. That is that is a, an interesting thing for him to say. Because it, it, it gives you a lot of comfort. But it's it's, at, at least I know that I feel comfort if I believe that what he is saying is true. I'm not saying that he's lying or that he's not lying. I'm just saying that like, hey, of course, you're working on this game. It is in your best interest to paint it on the most positive light possible. And the, you know, if you take a look into Riot's track record, like we saw previously in the, in the first video, it does seem like most of the stuff, they give it time, they release it properly, they, they do the work. It seems at least at first glance that they do the work to let these games flourish and succeed. So that is a good thing. The not having a pressure for, of a release date, that is a very good thing. I think that, you know, a, a statement like that is very important. That it's like, hey, we have the comfort to take our time and do the way that we want. That is good. That is good to hear. Hand in hand, we could make a very expensive bad game and then I would get fired. Um... Right. We could make a less expensive game that um, still really captures hearts and minds, but it's not a blank check, right? It's like really I have to prove so and the team has to prove that whatever Riot is putting into it is worth it because, right. you know, they could spend the money on somewhere else. They could make a different game. They could double down on Valorant or, or something. So it's it's definitely not a blank check, but it's also not like we're not a startup where oh gosh we're out of money what are we going to do you know i can always right. go back and ask for more whether or not i get more is going to depend a lot on what right. they think the you know how does the game look what do playtesters say how are we doing you know about hitting our milestones so that is how uh i mean in the very simplest sense you can think of it as you get some money if you spend it well they're going to give you more if you don't spend it well right. you probably don't. and in our right. case rather than shipping the bad game it would just get chick can that's awesome but i think that's that distinction, I think, is is massive. Not only from your per, like, not only from your perspective, but especially from the consumer's perspective. Like, just knowing that, hey, this MMO that's coming out, it's like money isn't the issue. They'll cancel it if it's not good. So, like, even that, like, just that notion, it's like. If this MMO were to be canceled, I would be devastated. I'd be really disappointed. I yeah. think everyone in the MMO world would be, the MMO community would be pretty devastated that it, it got canceled. But at the same token, I think it would bring a le another level of respect and be like, hey man, at the end of the day, it wasn't a money thing. It just wasn't good enough. They just, maybe maybe they'll revisit it later. You know, like I, I, I would have a lot of respect for a company that, that you know, would cancel a game because of that rather than the yeah. actual money that's going into it. That That's really, yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. The disappointment from players, and I understand there'd be disappointment. I'd be disappointed. But that's coming from, oh, I had such high hopes for this game, and I'm disappointed that it didn't get there. And right. they don't well, they don't want a bad game. They don't want us to right. like ship the game no matter what. They want a good game. And that's absolutely you know, if we can't deliver a good game, what are we doing? Absolutely, absolutely. So one of the things that the game does need to do is it needs to generate revenue. Okay. So I'd love to get your thoughts on the differences between from your perspective as the yeah, guys that, yeah. that needs to make that needs to generate the revenue love to hear your thoughts on a sub-based model versus a free-to-play model they you know the truth is they're both why not a buy-to-play model i wish you would also brought up the buy-to-play model that's my favorite one you buy it you play it you're good that's the model that i like viable what you generally get in a sub-based model is fewer players because fewer players can afford it but are i didn't, I didn't hear the start of the guys that, that needs to make that needs to generate the revenue love to hear your thoughts on a sub-based model versus a free-to-play model they you know the truth is they're both viable what you generally get in a sub-based model is fewer players because fewer players can afford it but are a very steady revenue stream. So you might say, mm -hmm. I would rather a million players who pay me $15 a month regularly than 5 million players who sometimes pay and sometimes don't. That's just, you know, that's just the economics right. of it. So generally, if you want to go free to play, it's because you think you can have a lot of players and you'll be okay even if they don't even if they don't individually spend a lot of money. You'll you'll have a lot of players who spend nothing. You'll have some players who spend more, but on average you're assuming they're not going to pay that much and you make up for it with with size and you see that a lot of mobile games not just mobile mmos but mobile games in general 
assume that they don't have very long a lifespan. So they need mm. to like make money right away, you know, right big away. body right away, because then they're gonna people are gonna drop them and move on to the next thing. It's also interesting that in in China, a little less so Korea, but still more so I think than in the West, the notion of pay to pay for power is not as you know, it's almost repulsive to a lot of Western players because they're like it comes to them as like, well, that's not it's beyond repulsive. It's fucking disgusting. Fair. Like, why should that person have better gear than me when they just spent money on it? Right. But at least to a, a Chinese mindset, sometimes they're thinking, well, I don't want to spend a lot of time grinding to get this item. Why can't right. I just pay you to get it right away and get to the good stuff? Maybe I just right. want to raise. Let me skip to the good stuff. Particularly, this was more true in, in both Korea and China when a lot of gamers. I don't like where this argument is going. I don't like where this argument is going at all. <laughs> Listen, go scroll. <laughs> hey, I don't like where this is going. I just had to play it at PC bongs or PC cafes because then they're literally paying for the hour. Right. So rather than paying per hour to get 100 hours to get a sword, let me just buy the sword and skip right. all that stuff. So right. we're not going to do pay to win. We're not going to do pay to power. I'm pretty confident saying that. Um, what oh, the that's business big. Like, hmm? <laughs> that's a big that's a big one <laughs> yeah, I, think I, I probably said that or a lot of players it's just sure, not riot sure. style. right we really want players to feel like they're welcome back in the game at any time and yeah if, if life is rough right now and you're between jobs or you just can't you know you can't pay for the subscription i'd, I'd rather them not you know not churn out rather than be able to keep playing so that's why Riot has traditionally liked uh, free to play with purely cosmetic purchases. But again, is that we're enough not... though for an because an MMO again? I'm very ignorant yeah. to the game development and the the budget side of things when it comes to MMO. But I would imagine that it's very expensive to maintain and run and create an MMORPG. Is it like yeah. is it feasible? It's very is it's it probably feasible? the most expensive kind of game to make. Right? I would think. I would think so. Is it feasible the to have... The thing close is like huge open world, you know, right. Horizon Zero Dawn, Assassin's Creed, Red Dead Redemption style. Those are mm -hmm. also very expensive, but... And MMO it's, it's funny to hear him say, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn, Assassin's Creed, and all the... If you just take all of the Assassin's Creed games, you put them together, and, you know, these are very high-budget games, very super, you know produced games whatever tons fuck tons of content all of these things and yet i look at like xenoblade chronicles x and it just destroys all of those games it just 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 takes a dump on them and i imagine the budget of that game was probably a lot less than most of the assassin's creed games that's something to think about huh <laughs> it needs everything it needs right. matchmaking it needs a chat system it needs you know a gear system it just every system everything. you can imagine so yeah they are very expensive to build and if it's a super content heavy game they're also very expensive to run absolutely if it's a more pvp based game or a more sandbox game it's less expensive to run because players are providing a lot of the, the content, content. Right, absolutely. Is is it feasible for a large scale MMO like a a big budget MMO to sustain with a free to play model that just monetizes off of cosmetics? Honestly, because like for me, I'm thinking <laughs> like no, like, like, I, like just, for me on like like technically theoretically yes. Obviously, if everyone is buying these costumes and yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, sure. I know for a fact it would be, but like. Honestly, like realistically, I feel like the answer to that is no. What would you I, say? No, we've we've done the math, and I think there is a world that 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 works out. Like, really, you can have enough players who are willing to pay enough on cosmetics to to fund a really big game. Really, like uh, how how often would you expect in order for that to work? How often would you expect to have to like release new cosmetics? Because obviously, you can't release one new cosmetic a year to be able to, right. Like no one's right. gonna buy right. That's well, not enough money. And, and, and I also know from experience that players resent when they feel like you're spending too much development effort on cosmetics. Like yes. to look at League of Legends, yes, for example, we, fucking we stopped do. making champions and just kept making skins. At some point players are like, well, this kind of sucks. You're only focused on the money-making side right. of the game. 
So you need to do both. You need to make sure the game balance is good. You need to update Absolutely. everything that you can in order for players to feel good about it. So, um, yeah, again, we don't we don't even know for sure exactly what our business model is going to be, but mm -hmm. I've done the math enough to convince myself that if we said, yeah, can can you launch a game with just cosmetics? Um, probably you can. Okay, interesting, interesting. So obviously you just said you just stated as far as the right MMO goes, there's no confirmation, there's there's none of that. But for you personally, what do you as a gamer, what do you personally prefer? Do you personally prefer to play a sub to play game or a free to play game that has in in uh, cash up? That the, has the one, yeah, the one thing that bothers me about a sub is kind of the guilt of I'm paying for this game and I'm not playing it right now. See, this is this is a very big deal. This is a very big deal. It's like, <clears throat> for me, it's less, but I remember back when I wasn't making content, this was a huge deal. And it was a major reason as to why I would play World of Warcraft, the exclusion of pretty much anything else. Because I'd be like, well, I'm paying money to play this game right now. I should be playing the game right now. Nowadays, it's a little bit different because, you know, I do content around these games. So it's just like, well, it's kind of, it's almost like a business expense to an extent. It's like, okay, so this is a business expense. So it's not really that big of a deal. But you go back, uh, for me, for instance, you go back 15 years, and the idea of being subscribed to two MMOs simultaneously is literally unthinkable. I'd be like, fuck no, you're crazy. Subscribe to two MMOs at the same time? Hells no. Uh-uh. Never going to happen. See? So I, th this is a very good point that Ghostcrawler brings up. I, dude, ah, I love the way that Ghostcrawler talks about MMORPGs. Holy shit. Not playing it right now. Mm. And so for, for a game like World of Warcraft, I came back and played the, the last expansion. Um, and then when I stopped playing, I felt like, well, the right thing to do is to cancel my subscription. Right, exactly. But then if I want to jump in and play one night, well, am I going to start my subscription up again? Like right. there's a little more friction there to, to really fitting in how there's I play. There's a lot Rather of friction. Like, if I want to play Valorant, I'll just pick up Valorant. If I want to put Valorant down for six months and pick it up again, you know, great, I'll do that. Now, yeah, there are battle passes and things like that that, you know, can be subscription like. Mm -hmm. But overall, I think that's the one flaw in the subscription model is as a player, you, you know, you feel like the right thing to do is to turn it on and off all the time. Right. Kind of a right. What do you think about the games that are free to play, but have like a subscription option where you get bonus stuff Good like, ex, you know, extra loot drop percentage, you know, extra experience, you know, uh, a lot of games do that. Like BDO does it, even Lost Ark does it to a certain extent. What do you think about that model? I think as a player, I think that's pretty cool because it gives you the option to kind of pay how you want. If if you're like, hey, I'm not ready to commit money. I'm not. I'm not a fan of. I'm not a fan of that because of the fact that you are, you can say what you want, but in the case of Lost Ark specifically, you are fundamentally buying power. It's just that simple. You can be like, ah, it's conven. Okay, convenience. Whatever. Call it whatever the fuck you want. It's power. It's. I, I don't care. It's like, oh, can you level up faster than other people? What do you call that? convenience power it's that simple like don't even don't even try to go it's a convenience it's a bit the, 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 the definition blah, blah. let me just muddle up the definition of pay to win and and change everything in a way that i can justify my my copium addled fumes it's like no bro it's by it's, it's pay to win like okay just 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 chill you can play a pay to win game if you want. Just like don't try to fucking come up with these different definitions and muddle the waters and and all this nonsense. In my town that's known as pay to fast. <laughs> Into this game? Awesome. But if you're like, "No, I'm in. I know I'm going to spend lots and lots of hours in this game. I don't mind, you know, spending a little more for a better experience." Um I think that's pretty cool. It is, you know, again, like I said before with the the pay for power, mm. it's a slippery slope and you can easily turn off yeah. players um, right. if you're if you're too heavy-handed with that. Very much so. Dude, I'm very curious to see the full interview on this. Uh, but if he says that it's like three hours, I don't know if I'll react to that on stream. We'll see, we'll see how that pans out. But for now, make sure to check out the video, leave it a like, uh, give it some watch time, all of that jazz. This is a very good video. Very good video indeed.
You said it's cool for Battle Pass. I fucking hate Battle Passes, dude. But I really like the way that uh, Greg Street talked about a lot of these things. I just really appreciate, like, it's a very down-to-earth view. It, it feels like a lot of the points that he made came from, like, a gamer's perspective, which is really, really cool. Like, you know, like, the, the fact that you never hear developers talk about sub-guilt in such an eloquent way as he did right there. I've never heard another MMORPG developer elaborate on that particular topic as eloquently as he did right there which is just like ah oh, you kind of feel guilty because you're not playing the game like you know they just don't they just don't talk about it you know 